Hello, beloved. I invite you to join with me now in a few moments of divine contemplation on the subject of the Archons. Let all extraneous thoughts pass from your mind and find yourself in a relaxed state. If you are driving or doing something which requires your attention or concentration, please pause this video and come back to it when you have some uninterrupted time for yourself. Over the last several weeks, I've spent a lot of time thinking about the Archons and their role in our lives. In fact, I recently had a lovely group chat with some folks and we discussed various ways of approaching this topic. And I hope you will indulge me while I give you my thoughts now. Since you're watching this video on this channel, I know that you're already in the proper mindset to learn about this important aspect of Gnosticism. The effect that the Archons have on our lives is profound, but most people aren't even aware of them. By the end of this video, you will find that your understanding of this topic will increase to the point where you can make some important changes in your life based on this new knowledge. And I will provide you with a way that you can make even more significant progress towards your own spiritual liberation. If that sounds like something you could use in your life, I hope you stick around until the end of the video to receive the benefit of this teaching. Every religion has had to wrestle with one important concept. Why is there evil in the world? Mainstream Christianity answers this question with the doctrine of original sin. Buddhism teaches that the world itself is suffering, but Gnosticism has the weirdest solution of all. Evil exists because the world wasn't created by the ultimate divinity, but by a lesser creator god who is either imperfect or outright evil, depending on the scripture. This creator god is known as the Demiurge, product of a mistake made by Sophia, one of the emanations of the divine. The Demiurge is unaware that he is not, in fact, God. Because he believed himself to be alone, he used the power given to him accidentally by his mother Sophia to create a crew of beings like himself to hang out with. These beings are known as the Archons. Together, under the direction of the Demiurge, the Archons create humanity and a world for us to live in. This world is separated from the realm of the divine, known as the Pleroma, and as a result, this world is an imperfect imitation of divinity. Imperfection leads to error, and error leads to evil. As with most scriptures, there are many levels on which you can interpret this story. Some choose to think of the Archons as processes of the natural world, such as the forces of nature. Others view them as sentient beings with motivations and agency of their own. You may find that the actual nature of the Archons is not tremendously important, but their effects are definitely observable. As I said, the creators of this world have a profound impact on your life. They are often associated with fate as they are the beings which set the stars in motion in Gnostic scripture. It is the Archons who are invested in maintaining the status quo. They don't want you to become aware of their existence. They want you to believe that you are in control of your life, but in truth you are not, at least not yet. Every action you've ever taken has been a result of the causal forces of this reality, driven by the Demiurge and his Archons. Of course, that is not to say that you are not responsible for your actions. You are, in fact, responsible for your own liberation, and you have been since the day you were born. Jesus and other spiritual teachers knew this and taught these truths to their disciples so that we can change our lives and become free. Knowing this truth, you gain the ability to break free of the chain of causality that has led you on thus far. The very fact that you are watching this video and thinking about these things is in itself a powerful act of cosmic rebellion. Archons can be sorted into three categories, moving from the most imminent to the most subtle. 
They are personal archons, communal archons, and universal archons. Personal archons are those parts of your personality and intellect that keep you in bondage to the world. They are your unconscious thoughts and emotions that keep you focused on the mundane things in life to the detriment of your spiritual journey. Many people like to use the example of the seven deadly sins. Consider gluttony. There is an archon of gluttony, for example, and for some people, myself included, this archon exerts a considerable influence. Gluttony is food in excess when it goes beyond your need to keep the body in good working order. Our bodies need food to eat, of course, and that will always be true, but is food for you a distraction from your pursuit of liberation? Gluttony is bondage to food. Our bodies and minds need time to slow down and relax from the other stresses of our lives. We find peace in rest, and yet sloth is rest in excess. It is an avoidance of important things because they are either too hard or because you have developed subconscious mental blocks which prevent our action. Sloth is bondage to sedentariness and inertia. Collective archons are systems and processes that involve human society generally. Things like economies and governments and social mores and even morality. I like to think of them as those abstract concepts that we agree upon together in order to live cooperatively. Now, did the system come first and the Archon develop out of it, or did the Archon plant the seed of the system? Interesting fruit for further meditation there. These systems do definitely have benefits for the societies in which they are used, and that is what makes them such powerful tools for the Archons. They convince us that uh, these are the best possible systems, and that the flaws are simply inherent in human nature and unavoidable. Consider the propaganda employed by your own societies to justify the perfection of your government and your economy. Archons thrive in such a system. Universal archons are those which govern nature, time, gravity, seasons, weather, and so on. These archons are huge lumbering beasts with almost unfathomable inertia. They are the furthest from our individual sphere of awareness, but they form the foundation upon which all of the other archons operate. They provide the raw materials of our bondage. There are countless examples of personal, communal, and universal archons, but each can be recognized by their effects. That which keeps you from awareness of your true divine nature is archonic. What archons do you struggle with? There are two schools of thought on the agency of the archons. Some believe that they have their own individual wills and motivations, similar but not the same as human will and motivation. They act intelligently to create new traps for us in the prison of matter. Others believe that the Archons are mindless forces, and they are simply do what they have been programmed to do, and can't be said to have any motivation at all. The truth is, it doesn't really matter. They are there, and they have real effects. Our only responsibility is to change ourselves and begin to move away from the Archons and towards God. Of course, one of the most profound secrets of Gnosticism is that the divine is present in us, in the world, and in the Archons as well. But that's perhaps a story for another time, when you're a bit more ready. Thus, the true aim of Gnostic religion is to liberate you from the forces of the Archons so that you can be totally free. Gnosticism teaches you how to become aware of your state of imprisonment and gives you the tools to liberate yourself. Easier said than done, of course. If it were as simple as watching a video about it on YouTube, you would surely already have done it. The first step towards liberation is to recognize that there is something wrong. The world contains beauty and joy, yes, but also pain and suffering. Recognizing the influence of the Archons is the first step towards overcoming them. Try to observe the world closely. Monitor your thoughts and emotions when something unpleasant happens to you. 
When you find something you believe to be arconic, try to make a choice that will lead you away from that unpleasantness. Replace feelings of hate and fear and pain with love. You have the ability to take control and direct your mind away from the archons and towards God, though it will take considerable practice. I'd like to help you liberate yourself. I have 15 years of experience studying and practicing Gnosticism, and it is my deepest wish to share that with you. I'd like you to make an appointment with me for 30 minutes. Just go to anthonysylvia.com meet and pick a time that works for you. We'll discuss your spiritual path and your goals, and I will work with you to find a spiritual practice that can help move you towards your liberation. It is my hope and my calling to see you finally free of the snares of the archons and know the kingdom of heaven here on earth. One thing to be aware of, however, is that any discussion of a spiritual nature must necessarily be incomplete. There is no higher authority than your true self, and you may find that your meditations and devotions lead you to new insights of the archons. This is wonderful. How delighted I am to know that you will be learning and growing in the light of the divine. Please feel welcome to share this video and this invitation with your family and friends. Be sure to subscribe to the Gnostic Wisdom Network because I have a lot more to show you. May you live in the light of the Pleroma. May the peace of God, which is beyond all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Word, and the Thought. Amen.